This little 3D printed clip saved me $500. I'll explain it all on today's Film of Friday. This video is brought to you by the Film of Friday E-Leveler 2. It helps you level those classic 3D printers with the four knobs. Level each corner by adjusting it till the light just turns on, and you'll get a perfect first level print. So check it out. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. I have a hot water boiler system in my house. It's got four different zones, and one of the zones kept running hot all the time. Well, we found out that one of the valves, there's a valve that opens and closes the water flow, was sticking, and it needed to be replaced. So I had it replaced. Guy came in, did all the work, but it was over $500. So at the end of last year, now into this year, we started to see the same thing in a different zone. So I went down and looked at it, and sure enough, the valve was sticking. But now I understand how these valves work. And I thought, could I fix this with a 3D print? So if you're not familiar with it, this is a boiler system. This box in the center is actually the boiler. Heats up the water and then pumps it through a bunch of different pipes through valves. Each room has its own set of pipes. The water runs through the pipes into the room and then comes back. And that's how it heats the room. And it's controlled by valves. And this is one of the valves. In fact, this is the one that's sticking. When the thermostat senses the temperature has dropped below its setting, it sends a signal to the boiler. The boiler then heats up the water to send through the pipes to heat the room. It also sends a signal to the valve to open that pipe. The valve has a little motor on it with a gear, and it turns an arm that has a gear on it, which is connected to the valve. So the motor turning opens the valve. There's also a little tab on that arm that presses a switch. And when the arm goes all the way up and presses a switch, that sends a signal to the boiler that the valve is now fully open. The water then flows through the valve, up through the pipe, and the pipe continues into the room. And in that room are registers. They're basically the pipe is running right through the register, but inside that register are little aluminum plates along the pipe. And that's like a radiator, radiates the heat, and heats the room. When the thermostat senses the temperature has been reached, it sends a signal to the boiler to shut down, and the boiler then sends a signal for the valve to close. The motor with the gear then reverses direction and pulls the arm down, thus closing the valve, and the switch is released, indicating that the valve is now closed. Now, occasionally what would happen is the arm would just go too far. It would press the switch but it was too far above the gear on the motor. So the motor would spin, but it wouldn't engage to the arm and pull the valve open. And so it would keep sending a signal to the boiler that the switch is open and it would keep driving the motor to spin and it would just spin and spin and spin and water would keep flowing into the room and it would just get hotter and hotter and hotter. And what I found is I could go down with a screwdriver, just touch the plate, pull it away from the switch, the gears would engage, it would open the valve, and everything would go back to working properly. So my thought was, why couldn't I 3D print a little cap to go over that tab so when it hit the switch, it didn't go too far, the gears would always stay engaged. Now, it wasn't easy to get into this valve, but I did get my calipers in there and took some basic measurements, so then I could go into Tinkercad and make a little clip to go over that tab. And this was my first shot at it. I just did a box with a cutout based on those measurements. And I thought it was just make this really simple. Just a box that would slide over the tab, but I cut out the center of the box so it would be friction fit. So hopefully it would just hold itself. Now I have no idea how hot it gets inside this valve. So I decided to use a high temperature plastic and print it on my Prusa Core 1. This is not a huge 3D print, so I was worried about how thin the walls would be. But the Prusa Slicer showed it would print it just fine. I'm going to use a high temperature plastic, in this case an ASA, and Prusa Slicer said I can print it in like two minutes, really quick. 3D Xtech gave me some ASA at a 3D print show, so I decided to try it out. Now getting in here was not easy. I had to use needle nose pliers right at the end of my fingers and kind of push this into place, and I could feel it wasn't fitting as tight as I'd hoped, but I figured I'd give it a shot and see how it worked. And I watched it, or I basically filmed it, while it was heating up, and the arm lifted up, the 3D print stayed on just fine, and it actually hit the switch, and then the motor stops without going too far. So it looked like the idea is going to work, I just don't know how well the 3D print is going to hold up. So even though the 3D print was restricting the travel, it did not block the flow of the water. The water flowed through the pipes just fine, through the register. I got the same amount of heat coming out 
of the registers and it heated the room just fine. Now, after several days of running, I went back and checked it and it looked like the 3D print had shifted to the right. In fact, it looked like it was rubbing against the wall of the valve. And when I looked closer, I could actually see trace marks of the 3D print rubbing against the wall. And I said, so this isn't good. I got to find a better way to mount this clip. I went back to Tinkercad with more knowledge and I redesigned the clip or modified it. So now it was open on two sides, but it had a little locking tab to go over the edge of the arm. I also angled the top of it. This is actually the side that would rub against the wall. So this way it shouldn't rub against the wall at all. I once again put it into a Prusa slicer and sliced it for the Prusa Core 1 using ASA filament. And again, it looked really good. The tab actually came out pretty good. I was worried that might be too small. I'm going to use the same filament, the 3D X-Tech ASA. And this time, Prusa slicer, it says it's going to take three minutes instead of two minutes to print. Now, I did print on a couple different variations. And this is one where I actually flipped it 90 degrees and I ran a test on it. And everything seemed to be good because the locking pin or that little tab was locking into the arm really nicely. This thing was not sliding. So after several days, I had a gap between the tab and the wall. I never seen any movement or any rubbing. So I solved the problem. This is a better design and I haven't had this thing stick since. So this beats hiring an HVAC company, trying to set up an appointment. They tell you they'll come between 12 and 5. They show up at 5.30 because they're running late. Then you got to wait for them to fix it all and then cut them a check for $500 plus to fix your problem. When I fixed it with a three minute print and maybe 25 cents worth of plastic, I mean, it's amazing what you can do with a 3D printer. And if you've got a 3D printer and everyone questions you, including your wife, why you spent money on that, here's a perfect case where I saved $500 with my 3D printer. Depending on the 3D printer, that might have covered the whole cost. And a Prusa Core 1, it's about half the cost. So having a 3D printer around can be really handy if you're willing to print something as simple as this and fix whatever your problem is around your house. I love it. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. I want to thank Prusa for donating the Prusa Core 1 to the channel. This thing has been awesome. And the ability to print high temperature filaments like ASA is a real bonus. I also want to thank 3DX Tech for the ASA filament. Great donation to the channel. Thank you very much. I want to give a big thank you to my Patreon supporters who are with me every month. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is the best way to do it. And if nothing else, click on the logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Chuck Hollowbox Electronic Products and Filament Friday.